Last week, Reuters reported that China is building an EUV prototype and aims to commercialize it in 2026. That update alone signaled China's intent to challenge ASML's monopoly. But now there's a new twist. SMIC, China's biggest chip manufacturer, has announced volume production on its newest 5NM class process called the SMIC N plus 3 node, and it's doing it without EUV machines at all. Instead, it's pushing deep ultraviolet immersion scanners, the same 193 nanometer lithography systems that the industry thought had already hit their practical scaling wall. And according to analysis from Tech Insights, Huawei's latest Kirin 9030 system on chip is manufactured on this N plus 3 node, making it the most advanced semiconductor produced in China without EUV technology. One step closer to reality. To understand why this matters, you need to understand what's missing from the equation. Extreme ultraviolet lithography, is like TSMC and Samsung, print the world's most advanced chips today. EUV uses 13.5 nanometer light, generated through laser-produced tin plasma, to etch extremely fine patterns onto silicon wafers. And as of now, ASML is the only company that has made EUV work reliably at industrial scale. Their latest frontier machine, the High NA EUV scanner, costs roughly $380 million per unit. That system is the next step beyond the current 3 nanometer and 2 nanometer manufacturing lines and is meant to carry the industry toward 1.6 nanometer class resolutions. China hasn't been allowed to buy EUV systems for years. Western export restrictions blocked shipments of EUV scanners to Chinese companies, forcing SMIC and Huawei to keep scaling with DUV immersion tools instead. DUV uses 193 nanometer light, which is 14 times larger than EUV's wavelength. Because the wavelength is so large, DUV can't print extremely small features in one pass. To reach smaller nodes like 7 nanometers or 5 nanometers, it has to rely on multi-patterning, printing the same layer multiple times with extreme alignment precision, gradually carving the final structure into the wafer. Every extra pass increases the chance of defects, misalignment, wiring shorts, or breaks, which is why yield becomes the biggest bottleneck. When yield drops, economics turn ugly because a large portion of printed dyes end up discarded or downgraded into weaker chip bins. Tech Insights recently analyzed Huawei's Kirin 9030 SoC and confirmed that the chip is built on SMIC's N plus 3 node. Kirin chips are some of China's most politically symbolic semiconductors because they represent progress under restrictions. The Kirin 9030 is a 5 nanometer class design, meaning its transistor density is closer to 5 nanometers than 7 nanometers, but it is not printed with EUV. It is printed entirely through DUV immersion with multi-patterning techniques like SAQP, self-aligned quadruple patterning, which has been a known method in chip making for years. SMIC likely optimized its 193 nanometer immersion scanners to push near 35 nanometer resolution per single pass, then applied multiple rounds of aligned exposures to etch dense metal and transistor layers. The best commercial DUV immersion scanners can print sub 38 nanometer features in one patterning round. That means 5 nanometer class silicon is theoretically possible with DUV. But every generation smaller requires exponentially more printing passes, tighter metal wiring pitch, more defect opportunities, and more time spent per wafer. The problem isn't that SMIC can't print 5 nanometer class features with DUV. The problem is the cost of doing it. Early N plus 3 runs are almost certainly operating at a loss. Tech Insights reported that the Kirin 9030 is likely produced at negative margins because so many dyes fail or get downbend into downgraded chip versions. Tight metal pitch is one of the biggest drivers of these losses because crowded wiring increases the odds of breaks, shorts, and unusable dyes. So while SMIC is calling it volume production, the economics behind that volume are brutal.
it takes far more passes to create one dense chip layer with 193 nanometer light than with 13.5 nanometer EUV, and each pass requires perfect alignment to avoid failures. Some people online argue that the cost difference between a 5 nanometer chip and a 7 nanometer chip isn't worth it if both are expensive anyway. But that argument ignores the most important variable, efficiency. A chip's upfront cost is one time. Its power draw is forever. More efficient chips either deliver more performance at the same wattage or the same performance at lower wattage. Over millions of devices or massive infrastructure deployments, efficiency beats price. Electricity is a limited and expensive commodity especially when AI data centers are exploding in scale. If a 5 nanometer chip gives even 15 to 20 percent better efficiency, that gap compounds into billions of dollars saved over a few years when deployed in phones, laptops, AI accelerators, or cloud compute clusters. Now zoom out and look at SMIC's bet. The company isn't just trying to print a few chips, it's trying to prove that it can scale semiconductor manufacturing without EUV at all. This is why analysts are split. On one side, China's internal R&D labs and companies like Huawei are building alternative EUV light sources using laser-induced discharge plasma technology, or LDP. That's the method currently being tested at Huawei's Dongguan facility. LDP generates EUV light at 13.5 nanometers by vaporizing tin between electrodes, converting it into plasma through high voltage discharge, then using electron ion collisions to emit radiation at the required EUV length. This approach has architectural advantages over ASML's laser produced plasma method, or LPP. LDP systems are simpler, smaller in footprint, potentially more energy efficient and could cost less to maintain because they don't rely on massive laser arrays or complex FPGA control hardware to stabilize the tin plasma emission loop. The LPP method used by ASML is decades refined but inherently complex. It requires high-energy CO2 lasers, real-time control electronics, and advanced photonic feedback loops to keep plasma bursts stable. China's LDP EUV system avoids part of that complexity, but it still has unanswered challenges. It has to prove resolution stability, throughput reliability, plasma uniformity, long-term uptime, and integration into existing chip flows. Photolithography workflows take years to perfect, and EUV commercialization requires more than light generation. It requires precision optics, mirrors, resist chemistry, wafer alignment systems, cooling stability, and defect suppression at scale. But SMIC didn't wait for EUV. It took the harder road, stretching DUV beyond expectations. In September, reports surfaced that SMIC was testing a domestic immersion DUV scanner built by Shanghai Luyangsheng Technology. That scanner was built for 28 nanometer class processes and was compared to older ASML twin scan designs from around 2008. Many analysts were skeptical that China could make a scanner competitive enough so fast. But the skepticism is justified. Breakthrough lithography takes years, sometimes decades, to stabilize. Even if SMIC tested domestic scanners, it's unlikely those machines could jump to 5 nanometer class silicon immediately. The more logical conclusion is that SMIC is still using ASML's older DUV immersion tools, the best ones it already owns and refining the multi-pattern stack on top of them to mimic EUV-like density. This creates a strange paradox. China is trying to build a fully domestic lithography ecosystem while still depending on the most advanced Western DUV machines it managed to acquire before export controls tightened. The push towards self-reliance is clear. China wants the U.S. completely removed from its semiconductor supply chain. It wants to design and manufacture its chips on machines that eventually will be built entirely by Chinese companies using Chinese supply chains. But until those EUV or next-gen domestic DUV tools actually work at scale, SMIC has to stretch the tools it already owns. Some online comments say that 5 nanometer for AI GPUs is more than enough for years, and they're not wrong. 
For AI accelerators, a 5 nanometer class silicon is sufficient for current workloads and for years ahead. The cost difference between 7 nanometer and 5 nanometer, even if 40 to 50 percent higher, is nothing compared to the trillions the US is spending on data centers. When you look at the nodes like 2 nanometer costing 50 percent more than 3 nanometer, the cost delta is normal. It's physics driven inflation. The smaller you go, the more expensive it gets. The difference is that TSMC and Samsung use EUV heavy flows to control yield at those advanced nodes. SMIC is doing the same job with 193 nanometer light, multi patterning, and brutal alignment overhead. There's also a laser subplot worth understanding. The CAS, China's Academy of Sciences, demonstrated a fully solid state 193 nanometer laser architecture using crystals instead of toxic gas chambers. Traditional DUV lithography lasers rely on excimer bursts created by argon, neon, fluorine gas mixtures pulsed at 8 to 9 kilohertz and delivering 100 to 120 watts of output. Fluorine gas is toxic, dangerous to handle, and increases maintenance complexity. The CAS laser achieved 193 nanometer emission by generating 1030 nanometers infrared light through a YB YAG crystal amplifier, splitting the beam via nonlinear optics into a 258 nanometer fourth harmonic signal, generating 1553 nanometer through optical parametric amplification, then mixing both beams through cascaded LBO crystals to produce coherent 193 nanometer radiation. The architecture works, but the output power is only 70 megawatts. That is hundreds of times weaker than the Exmer lasers used in real fabs. So while the chemistry and physics are proven, the laser is not remotely ready for mass semiconductor etching. Scaling solid-state lasers to 100-watt class industrial output while maintaining stability, coherence, mirror reliability, and heat uniformity is an engineering mountain of its own. All of this paints a realistic picture of SMIC's progress. Technically impressive, economically rough, geopolitically massive. It proves China can keep scaling silicon even when tool access tightens. It also proves that printing extremely small nodes on DUV alone is economically suicidal because of yields, time, and energy overhead. But it also proves that if efficiency gains compound over large deployments, the initial chip price becomes less important than the operational savings and power draw. The next 12 months will determine whether SMIC's N plus 3 node scales into sustainable manufacturing or stays symbolic volume production sold at a loss. China's EUV prototypes must still prove resolution, uptime, throughput, and integration. But the ambition is undeniable. SMIC stretched EUV further than analysts expected. Huawei is pushing alternative EUV generation with LDP. CAS is building solid state 193 nanometer laser paths that remove toxic gas chambers. Chinese fabs are collaborating to integrate EUV into existing flows. The story isn't about one machine or one node. It's about a country trying to rebuild the entire invisible stack of semiconductor manufacturing under restrictions, raising a moving frontier that TSMC, Samsung, and ASML continue to push forward every quarter. So, do you think China will finally be able to break U.S. monopoly? Comment your thought below, and if you want the real story behind the world's fastest moving AI breakthroughs, Make sure to like and subscribe to Evolving AI for daily coverage.